Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, hydroponic nutrients. So I've done a bunch of hydroponic videos in the past and lately I've done a few and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and also a lot of questions about um, what I'm doing, uh, especially those that are um, starting out into hydroponic. And hydroponic is such a great method um, it allows you to grow uh, plants inside and uh, it will greatly benefit those that uh, like uh, for those that live in the big cities where they don't have um, a lot of space and those that live in apartments that don't have a yard to grow things in so the, it is a, a really uh, great method that allows people that usually can't grow to grow things so I have a list of questions uh, that is m most frequently asked on the channel. So uh, before we go into this, I'm going to show you some of the hydroponic nutrients that I used in the past. And I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I just am going to show you uh, what I've used. And as you know, I love to experiment. So I buy all kinds of stuff and um, I just use them. And then I'll figure out which one works best and I'll stick with those. So let's go ahead and take a look and then I'll come back and answer these questions. All right, guys, here are all of the nutrients that I'm currently using. And uh, we'll start with this side here. This is the Dynagrow and Dyna Bloom series right here. Then we have Cow Mag. Then those are the Flora series. And then back here, we have the uh, Master Blend. And then we have some Cool Bloom, Maxi Grow, Maxi Bloom. And then these are the things that you have to have um, when you do hydroponic and that is pH down and pH up and also your pH buffer. This is for adjusting your um, your, your pH meter. Uh, also I have the Aero Garden and I have a larger one as well. So uh, in order for you to um, uh, have success uh, with hydroponic growing, you're gonna have to invest in a really good meter uh, I purchased a bunch of these uh, $12 ones in the past on Amazon, the really, really cheap ones. And then, I mean, they work great for like a few months and then they just go bad. So um, I invested in a, a better one and uh, this is one of the the ones that I've used. Um, this I think this is uh, the Dr. Meter. So this is a, a good one. It's a little bit pricier than those $12 ones. but. Um, you'll be happy that you invest in something like this. Uh, I have used the other one as well, like the pH 80 or something like that, and that one worked well as well. Um, but you must have pH down if you have hard water to drop your pH down to a, a good level. And you need this pH buffer to adjust your pH because uh, you know every now and then it may um, go out of um, the range. So you just have to adjust it to make sure that it's on, it's on point. So uh, uh, when you do that, it, it'll be better for your, um, your grow because uh, the plants can take up all the nutrients that they need when they're at the right pH level. So um, make sure you search, uh, uh, or I'll, I'll link you guys to the pH um, chart. That way you can see uh, the effect of it. Okay, so those are the nutrients. So let's go ahead and begin and uh, we'll go into uh, 10 most commonly asked questions on hydroponic on my channel. All right, guys, so let's go into the question. Um, the first one, this is actually the, the most popular one and that I get all the time. What is the best hydroponic nutrients? <laughs> This question is very difficult to answer because really I don't know what the best is, but I can tell you which one I prefer or use the most. And uh, in the past, I used Master Blend. It is a great um, type of uh, hydroponic nutrients and it is very cheap. So um, you have three parts, which is the 41838, the calcium nitrate, and then the, the magnesium sulfate. So you mix those three together, uh, they're granular, so you have to kind of like stir them up. And uh, they are just amazing and they will grow uh, lettuce and tomatoes like you've never seen. Um, I also like um, the 
Dynagrow and the Dyna Bloom series because it is so easy to mix. Um, I love nutrients that are just like one part or two parts where you just mix quickly. So <laughs> I like things that are easy and simple. Um, you know, like stuff like uh, the uh, Flora series where you have three parts to mix. Uh, it works great. It's just I, I prefer something that is much faster and easier. So the Dynagrow and the Dynabloom, they're two parts. The Grow is where uh, you're doing vegetative stage. Or you could just growing um, vegetable like leafy greens. So you just mix um, uh, the, the grow part and then that's it. And then if you grow peppers or tomatoes or fruiting plants, um, once the plants begin to bloom, then you switch over to the bloom. And then <laughs> that's, that's as simple as it can get. Okay, um, so uh, since we're on that topic, can you grow, can you use just grow for the entire cycle? Yes, you can. Um, they're formulated for a certain purpose, but if you don't have it, you don't have to use it. So sometimes I just use grow only for the entire life uh, of my peppers and they produce just fine. Maybe they don't produce as much if I use bloom, but they still produce a ton of peppers. Um, I think all of the videos that I've done recently, they, I, I use basically just the grow series. I mean the grow only, no bloom. Okay, so that's question number one. Uh, I don't know what the best one is, but I do have preference. Uh, can you use hydroponic nutrients in soil? This is part two. Yes, you can. Uh, there are um, nutrients that would list uh, the instructions where you can, you know, there's a certain amount to use in hydroponic and there's a certain amount to use in soil. And have I done it? Yes, I do it all the time. Uh, I try to grow as organic as possible, but when I have no option, then I would, you know, go to these uh, backups where I give them the nutrients they need and the, the plants come back to life quickly. So yes, um, I've used, uh, let's see, um, the maxi one there. Uh, I also used uh, the Dyna Grow. I've used the Aerogarden uh, nutrients in soil. So those are uh, some of the things. And also I use a lot of bloom. So sometimes my peppers are having difficulty with blooming. Uh, then I would use like the hydro, uh, like here the fluorescent bloom or any bloom that I have available like the, the, the bloom over here, the maxi bloom, uh, dino bloom, so any kind of bloom that I have. Uh, actually this one also, the cool bloom, this is a great um, product um, for uh, assisting with flowering plants when, when they're in that, that blooming stage. So look into that if you like. Um, it does work really well. And uh, all of these here, uh, the, what I'm telling you is from my own personal experience. I'm not an expert, please guys, I'm not an expert. And I said this many times. So there's a lot of people that, you know, they, they will criticize you for all kinds of reasons. Um, I don't claim to be the expert. What I'm telling you is from my own personal experience and what has worked for me. So um, for those that are expert, I'm sorry if I mislead you guys, but I'm just telling you from what I, what I have experience with. Okay, so that's question number two. So question number three, uh, do some hydroponic nutrients have a pH buffer? You know, I've read that some did in the past, but none of the ones that I've used uh, have a buffer in it. But it is always a good idea to mix your nutrients first and then adjust pH because the pH may drop a few points uh, after the nutrients is added. So uh, make that a habit, you know, get your water ready, um, add your nutrients, stir it up, mix it all together, and then test pH and then adjust then. That way you have uh, the most accurate reading. And also when you uh, test pH, once you test it, um, let it settle and then you know mix it up again and then give it another test if you want to be really careful okay so uh, yeah so I'm, I'm not sure which one has pH buffer but I've read that some do okay so question number four 
Uh, some nutrients listed grow and bloom. Do I have to use both? I think I just answered that. Uh, you don't have to use both if you don't have both. But um, some nutrients are formulated in, in, in that way, like the Flora series right here, where it, it tells you how to mix the grow, the micro, and the bloom. Uh, certain amount uh, throughout the cycle of your plants. So I think the flora series, uh, you use all three parts together. Uh, have I used one or two parts without the other? Yes, I have used, <laughs> I've used the, uh, the micro and the grow and I leave out the bloom sometimes when I'm not growing fruiting plants. So, uh, you know, you can read more about it, adjust it or test on your own. That's the best, just test on your own. So um, you don't have to use uh, the bloom uh, with the grow if you don't want to like like um, as I mentioned these right here uh, but it is formulated like you know, to have uh, you use all three parts um, number five can hydroponic nutrients be used for all plants um, I think yes because I've grown herbs, uh, fruiting plants like peppers and tomatoes. I've even grown trees. Um, we'll get into that in a bit. Um, yeah, all the leafy greens you can you can grow uh, with the hydroponic nutrients. Um, all the fruiting plants like tomatoes, peppers, those are all great to use. Um, so I guess hydroponic nutrients can be used for all plants I, I don't know any that you can't use hydroponic nutrients on and if you do please let me know so that way I don't use it on the plant okay so uh, number six I see some of your videos you adjusted pH and some you did not <laughs> is adjusting pH a must um, yes it is a must uh, but do you have to do it no you don't have to do it um, in the Aragorn I think also when you grow in Aragorn, uh, with the Aragorn nutrients, I don't see a section where they, to they tell you to adjust pH. They basically say add water, pour in your nutrients, and turn it on, and that's it, and it worked. Um, in the past videos, I did the exact same thing. Um, I did some where I adjust the pH, where um, like the Dynagro and the... Um, the flora series um, and then the master blend and the maxi and all that stuff for those I I usually do adjust pH when I use uh, those nutrients but um, for the Aragorn because um, of how the Aragorn nutrients work uh, I don't think they even call it nutrients they call it plant food so um, basically the the roots would just go down in, in search of food and it, as long as it has like like um, oxygen and uh, it is able to find um, the food then it will grow so uh, in, in the last few videos where I used the hydroponic no, actually the Aragorn nutrients I didn't adjust pH and it worked exactly the same way there I've tested it I for me myself I didn't notice much of a difference so well, maybe I need to do a more thorough test where one I used um, ones where I pH adjust and then one I did without but yeah, to answer your question, is it a must? Yes, there's a chart you should go by and I will try to find that chart and link you guys because at a certain uh, 7, pH of 7 is neutral and a pH of 4 or anything under is very acidic. So at a certain um, range, the plant it will be able to pick up a certain um, nutrients that the plants require. So they're, um, they're very specific need so uh, if, if, if the pH is very acidic then the plant will have trouble picking up a certain nutrient and if it's if it's too neutral it, the same thing so there's a certain range that work that will work best for the plants to be able to absorb all the nutrients they need so uh, uh, I don't know if it's a must but I, I say that it, it you should and it is recommended uh, for for the best results okay um, should I invest in a good pH meter to use uh, or use pH strips or anything that I, they have uh, pH strips are great but it is a very long process and it's just a little bit difficult to use because you gotta 
put the water in and then you shake it up and then you put the strip and then you got to compare it to the color and, and read it. it it's just too much time so I spend a little bit you know and invest in the good uh, pH meter uh, if you don't have a lot of money and you're just getting into hydroponic maybe you can use those uh, $12 ones on Amazon but then they'll break down and then you have to buy a new one uh, I think I've gone through four of those already <laughs> in very little time so uh, that be that's like 40 bucks so invest in a good one and uh, it'll be uh, for your benefit so yes, I do uh, recommend you get a good pH meter. Uh, is liquid nutrients better than the granular nutrients? Um, th it depends. Uh, for example, I would not use granular, uh, like uh, the one with grains, uh, inside the arrow garden unit. And the reason for that is because they have moving parts and there's pump and there's a uh, filter and uh, these granular sometimes they don't dissolve so they have little bits and pieces here and that may get stuck in your equipment so if you're growing uh, using electronic uh, hydroponic systems uh, then stay away from the granular because it's it, they're very difficult to dissolve and i mean i've tried everything and you still get bits and bits so um, um and then for the liquid again uh, if you grow in the aero garden or anything that is electronic, I recommend going with the liquid because it's, it's easy and it won't uh, get stuck into your systems and it's much cleaner. Um, it's just easier to use and better. Uh, it will give you uh, life, a better lifespan on your electronic grow systems. So um, that's basically it. I don't think there's one that's better than the other. Uh, the granular ones are much cheaper. So if you want to think of it that way, uh, they're very affordable. Um, the Flora series is very expensive. And I think the, the Aero Garden, the big size like this, is like $30. And the Dyna Grow, Dyna Bloom, I think they're $20 per bottle of the 8, eight ounce, or 32 ounce, sorry. Um, so yeah, they're, they're much cheaper, the granular ones. Okay, so number nine, can you grow trees in hydroponic? Yes, you can. <laughs> if you have the time to invest in growing trees, you can grow it in hydroponic. So most people don't grow trees in hydroponic is because there is no space. Um, mo a lot of people that grow um, hydroponic, you know, you have a tent and you're very limited to space. So you usually grow like fruiting plants like tomato and tomato can get massive already. Uh, peppers and basils and you know herbs you can use um, and they're quick you know within 30 days or 60 days you have fruits uh, within uh, 30 days you have leafy greens and all that stuff so uh, 60 days I, I mentioned that may be for very fast fruiting plants uh, tomato may be a little bit longer peppers could be like three four months so um, yeah you can grow trees oh wait check out Chris's channel he's growing um, a coffee tree inside hydroponic and that tree is producing right now so I'm gonna link you to Chris's channel uh, it is amazing how he's growing this coffee tree in, in there and uh, I personally I have grown pear trees I've grown it from seed to around you know like six months it grows pretty quick um, so, I mean, I ran out of space, of course, I just don't know where to put it. So, if you have the space, you can probably grow trees in the time also. Okay? And the last question here, is cow mag needed for hydroponic? Uh, in some um, nutrients, uh, they don't have the correct amount of cow mag. And when you grow like tomatoes and peppers where they, they do require calcium and magnesium, uh, like sometimes you have uh, tomatoes that uh, have um, uh, what is it called the the bottom end rot, and that's when it's lacking calcium. So cow mag can really help boost the growth of, of the and prevent that from happening. So calcium is a is a good um, addition to add, but it is not a must. Um, I mean I've used um, those over there. 
um, not this Dyna Grow and Dyna Bloom. Um, and I never had to use CalMag. I do have CalMag somewhere, right here. And I use it in my uh, soil sometimes, and I, I add it to my flora series sometimes when I, uh, when I needed it, um, like for growing tomatoes for a long period. So um, it is not a must, but it does help with some things that require more calcium and magnesium. Um, that is basically it, guys. That is the questions that I get so often and that I'm able to collect and uh, share with you in this video. So if you have more questions, maybe you can leave it below and then I can do a follow-up video uh, answering more questions on hydroponic. But um, I love growing hydroponic. It allows me to grow in winter time. It allows me to do very fun project inside. Um, uh, children really love hydroponic because they get to see it grow. Like um, if you grow beans, oh my goodness, it, it just <laughs> it grows so fast. So if you have like a school projects with your kids, maybe try out some hydroponic. They'll, they'll, they'll really love the result and they'll, they'll look at it and, and you know, they want to see it every day because it grows so fast. Um, and it also allows me to do like um, creating new breeds of peppers and stuff like that. So uh, that is why I really like hydroponic. But you know, everybody has their own opinion. If, you know, some just don't care for it and some really hate it. And some, that's what they, all they do. So that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, this video was helpful and uh, maybe we'll do more in the future if I have a lot more questions. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.